So yesterday we looked at a graphical user interface way of setting up Ethereum mining as well as other types of cryptocurrency mining. Today I want to look at a different way of setting up Ethereum mining. This time there is zero overhead with withdrawing your Ethereum into a personal wallet. However, it does involve manipulating a batch file in Windows, so it's slightly more complex. However, it's still very easy to get set up. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So let's go. Before we get started here, I will go ahead and say that the two websites that we're using will be listed in the description below and linked down there for your convenience. So let's go ahead and hop into this. Now first you're going to want to go to a website called myetherwallet.com and you should be presented with this very simple screen and in the middle of the screen is this very simple form. You need to enter a strong password of at least nine characters and I will do that now. Now, since this is just a test wallet, I'm totally never gonna actually use this wallet outside of this tutorial, but um, there's my password, Hoosier Hardware Rocks. From there, all you have to do is click Generate Wallet, and now you need to save your wallet file. So all you gotta do here is click the Download button, and it downloads your wallet, and we will leave that put for just a second. And of course, never ever lose this file because if you do lose this file, you are out of luck and you will have to start all over. So the best way that you could sort of save this file is either put it on a cloud-based storage solution or keep it on a network attached storage device that has some sort of redundancy. From there now, you're gonna click the I promise I won't lose this ever continue and now you're presented with a private key that is unencrypted. You're gonna wanna keep this key somewhere, whether you write out the entire string of letters and numbers down on paper, or you just save it in a text file. I'm gonna recommend saving it in a text file and then keeping it on some sort of local storage, a flash drive that you can hide somewhere, just something somewhere where you won't lose it. So since I'm gonna put it on a text file, I'm gonna go ahead and click new text file, and I'm just gonna call this guy's keys. Then in the text file, I'm just gonna write my private key, copy it directly, and paste it there. Once you have that key copied or printed off or whatever, somewhere where you won't lose it, you're gonna click next, save your address. And now for the accessing my wallet, I'm gonna go ahead and click key store file. However, if you'd like to use that private key again, you may do that as well. Now, since I've already downloaded my wallet file, that's gonna be just sitting in my downloads folder. So I'm just gonna click on select wallet file, go to my downloads and click on that wallet file and then click open. Now, since my wallet is encrypted, I have to type in that password again and then click unlock. And now this is my address. This is how if you are mining or if you are having somebody send you ether or and really it works the same with other cryptocurrencies. This is the address that they're gonna use. So again, you wanna save this. So I'm gonna just copy that. And then I'm gonna add a line for my address in that keys.txt file that I made. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save that so that I won't lose that and it's right at my fingertips. Now we are done with myetherwallet.com so we can move back over to ethermine.org. Now there are several different miners you can use from ethermine.org. I'm gonna just use a very popular one, which is the top one they have listed. It's the Ganoyles miner. So to find this, and, and it's basically the same for these other ones as well, you're gonna go to the download link. This one says the Windows builds are here. And now this takes you to a page to download. I'm on download the most recent one, which is Ganoyle 1.1.7. And then of course I'm gonna click download. And now for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that onto my desktop so it's right there and easy for me to work with. And then I'm gonna right click it and extract it onto my desktop. So I now have this folder with my ether miner, my Ganoil 1.1.7 on my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and drag my keys text as well over into that folder just so it's all in one place. Now we're gonna hit back a couple times to get back to ethermine.org and navigate back where we had earlier clicked on this download link for the Windows builds. Now we're paying attention to the, these two text boxes that are below that. And this is how we configure our miner to actually mine for ether and deposit it into our own wallet. So if we open up our ether miner uh, folder that we just extracted and put on our desktop, we now need to create a text file and you can name this text file absolutely anything you want. For me, I'm just gonna call it start. And now I'm into my start.txt file, it's completely blank. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste everything in this top part directly into my file. 
Now, for most of you that are using this as a dedicated miner and that's all it's going to be sitting on, you won't really need to change any of these numbers up top. You're just going to leave them all 0, 100, 1, 100, 100. Just sort of leave those defaults. Um, you can experiment with those to see how it affects your computer's performance, but they are not essential to change to get up and running. Now, currently, we are set up to use the European server as the primary server, which is this highlighted address here. And then the backup is the US server, and we're gonna wanna change that. So down below, back in ethermine.org, you can see the servers all listed. We're gonna use only US servers here. We're gonna actually make the East server because I'm in Indianapolis and towards the Eastern side of the country. I'm gonna copy that server address and insert it where the European server used to be in the text file. Now the last things we need to do are going back into my folder into my keys you'll see there's a spot for my address now you're going to want to use the address that was generated for your wallet so when you actually do the mining for this pool they can deposit the ether that you earn into your wallet so we just copy our address and on this side we put it into where it says your ethereum address and now the rig name you can name this literally anything you want as long as it's alphanumeric i believe um, i'm just gonna call it rig one and i'm gonna keep a version of this text file as a text file so if i ever need to change it i always can but next we need to save this whole thing as a batch file so we're gonna go to save as and down below we're gonna change the save as type to all files and then instead of start.txt, we're going to just change that to start.bat. And then just save it. And now we can close out all of these text files and pull up our folder. Now we should have this start.bat file. And all you got to do now is double click that. And now it is going through the process through this command line of just setting everything up based on the settings that you already put into your start.bat file. Once it's completed doing this, it will start mining and you will have an up and running miner going from your computer. So that is pretty much it for the basics of getting your mining rig set up and getting it going. I will go ahead and throw out there that for mining Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, if you have a graphics card, that is mining or attempting to mine with a two gigabyte VRAM buffer or smaller, then you will likely not be able to actually use this uh, because the DAG file does not have enough room. Uh, you'll get some sort of like uh, error that says that the G DAG file could not be allocated because of a memory limit or something to that effect. So basically, unless you're willing to go into the back end and find your own fix for that, you're gonna be stuck with four gigabyte graphics cards and up, which are most modern cards that are mid-range and higher tiered. So do bear that in mind though, if you're going out to buy a graphics card for this purpose. Hopefully you found all of that informative guys. If you did, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what your hardware is that you are mining your cryptocurrency, whether it be Ethereum or some other cryptocurrency. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you in the next video.